Hi, I'm Danny Wilson. Uh, we've brought you today to the amazing Angles Art Reservoir. Where we're going to show you a bit of bream fishing with a little twist. Right, well I promise you a bit of a twist. Um, today we're going to be fishing, we're going to be fishing traditional bream fishing, but we're going to be fishing with two hooks. Um, it's it's more of a, a regional thing from Lancashire, um, few of the reservoirs around here, we fish in the matches, in the open matches what we do fish, we've ca we can actually fish what they call a double hook, um, which means you can fish an up length, but with obviously two hooks. So we're going to run you through that today. Right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to talk you through the rig, um, what we're using today. Like I said to you, it is um, a traditional pattern oster, but with a slight twist in the, va in the fact that we've got two hook baits. Um, it's, a bit, <laughs> it's a bit agricultural. Um, what it is, we're fishing, because you're fishing with two hook baits and um, big baits really, because we're fishing, we're trying to catch bream, um, we're not messing about today, we're fishing with great big hooks, tens hooks, five pound maxima up length. Um, we're trying to select the big fish uh, rather than the smaller fish. So we're fishing with big up baits, like I said, worms, two worms, bunches of maggots, casters, sweet corn, anything. Um, but like I said, we have got two options and two different up lengths um, away from your feeder. So you can vary that up with different up baits on different hooks, see which one's working, um, see which one's the best on the day, and see how you can get the most out of your peg. So when we're fishing like this with two hooks, like I said, you can, it is prone to tangles, um, just because obviously you've got a bit more, you've got you've got more components basically what you're casting out. Um, so we're trying to keep it as basic as we can. Um, so what I'll do, I'll show you through the rig. We've got a metre and a half of five pound maxima, um, going to a fixed pattern off the rig. Coming down from that, 50 centimetres below it is a loop with a six inch up length off the loop, which goes to a size 10. Um, and then we've got another 50, well, it's another 70 centimetres after that. We've got the dropper hook, which usually you would have the bigger bait on to keep the bait away from your feeder when you're casting to prevent tangles. And that should sort the job out. Um, a great great rig for catching bream and we can, we'll show you today how we're catching them on it right okay so let's get fishing um we've chosen a spot today at 55 meters um the the, the ground and the contours of what the lake is it slopes off gradually um, we're fishing in about 12 foot ish. Uh, the reservoir's quite low at the minute. So, what we're looking for is just nice ground basically, so we can put a bit of feed in, hopefully, get a few fish congregating over where we're fishing, um, and we'll catch a few. What I've done this morning, when we first started, I put 15 big feeders in. Like I said, we've not put any worms in. I haven't put many maggots in. I put a few dead maggots in, nothing, nothing alive. Um, just to try to prevent bringing in perch and small fish because like I said you do get problems with Tommy Ruff and what they call daddies and things like that little perch what sometimes if there's too many in your peg it makes it hard work to catch anything else um, so what I've done I've fed more bigger baits like your casters dead maggots sweet corn there is a few pellets in my mix uh, which is just a holding factor for the bream um, but yeah, that's that's where we're going with it. We want to try and catch you better fish. 
So the bait tray, like I said, the side tray governs that. Um, so we're going to do it. What we're going to do now, we're going to have a chuck and see how the peg develops and see if we can catch a few bream. We're putting a bit of bait in every feeder what we're fishing. Um, it's a fish meal mix, it's a green fish meal mix. It's um, Sonia Pay, it's super crushed green with a bit of F1 original in it, just so it's a nice, fluffy. It's a light mix, uh, but we have put quite a little bit of water in it so that it, it deadens it off slightly. When you bring fish in, I always like a dead mix, um, so we're not, we're not bringing fish up in the water. We want them picking on the bottom, picking out your bigger food items like your bits of worm, um, your sweet corn, even double baits like worm and castor, worm and corn, um, corn and maggots. But with us fishing two hooks, we can change the baits. We can have a different up bait on the top to the bottom and we can see which is working best. Um, and we can go from that and make the, make the most out of your peg. So what I'm gonna do, we'll load it up with just casters um, and a couple of grains of sweet corn. Like I said, there is a few pellets in the mix which hopefully should keep the bream there if there is any bream there and we'll see where the peg goes what I'm doing today um, like I said we're fishing 55 meters out today with a big feeder um, we're fishing with a zippler, a zippler, zippler riser cage we're fishing with today, which is a perfect feeder for this reservoir. You need a big feeder, you need a bit of noise going in with the feeder and you could do, it, it, it always helps because you're putting a lot of bait in. So to me they're the perfect feeder for this job. Um, we're fishing braid, fishing all 10 braid um, to an all 16 braid shock leader. Now, you might think that's a bit different, like why is he not, there's a fish straight on that. Why is he not using mono of a shot leader? Well, sometimes, it's all, it, it's all down to personal preference, but when I'm on places like this where it's wild, conditions can change, I like knowing that you can chuck as heavy a feeder as you want to chuck, and you won't have any problems with frap ups, you won't have any problems with crack offs. So we fish bread direct. Um, you have to counterbalance that with a rod, which is quite, well, not. it needs to be forgiving enough to, um, to not bump your fish. So it's all about having a balanced setup for the fish that you're catching. So we're fishing today, I don't know what this is, let's say it'll do like a skimmer. That's a skimmer there, first chuck, which is a good sign. It's on the back hook, which probably means, or means to me, you know how I'm thinking, that fish, because it's gone so fast, that fish has watched that bait down with your bait coming off your cage feeder, and it's took it probably before it's even hit the bottom. So what we're going to do now is repeat the process. Like I said, we've got two hooks on. We've got the same bait on both hooks at the minute. We've got a worm, or half a worm, half a dendy, and a red maggot just to hold the hold the bait on. So I'm going to repeat the process. What I'm doing when I'm hooking my worms on is nipping the head off the worm and threading the hook through the pe through the hole what you've created in the worm so that I think you get a bit more smell near your hook and it doesn't fold over the hook now you, you hear a lot with people fishing feeder fishing especially where you they'll say oh my bait my bait's gone over the hook or a bumped fish because my worm's gone over it what I'll do in a bit is show you a couple of ways what I find is uh, it counteracts that And it hopefully maximises, like you say, the time in the water and a bit more confidence that your up, your up point is proud. There's 
just tightening up to that feeder. That you're up points proud and every bite you get should be a fish in the net. I'll set my start watch and just time how long it takes for me to start getting indications. See, so look at that, a line of state, and it's not even a line, it's a bream. You can't ask for a better start than that, can we? Boy, it'll be interesting to see which hook it's on again. Because with you be having the option of fishing two hooks, with your top hook being shorter and closer to your feeder, if you do start catching bream on a top, or you're catching fish on a top hook, it normally indicates that that they're coming to the actual feeder and not to the off, not to the to the feed, to the loose offerings what you've got in your peg. Which again you can change things up by even shortening this off. I'll just see where this fish is going. Feels like a better fish. Yeah, so like I was saying, you can you can change what's going on in your peg by seeing what hook you're catching your fish on. You know that one is on my top hook, which indicates to myself that that fish has come straight to the feeder which I think it will have done because my bait is still in the feeder. So that's how long that's been in. And we've got a fish what's probably two pound, two and a half pound. <coughs> Wild fish. I know. Not if you can see that. Great weight building fish. So that one, like I said, it's come on my top up. But it's come on worm again. So I'm not going to change anything for a minute. It'll be a new worm. And two new maggots behind it. Like I said, we nip the worm off and thread the hook through the hole that you've created. And what the maggots do is make sure that your up point's exposed every time. And when the fish are on you, you can make the most of what you've got. So again, we're loading the feeder. Just casters and corn, big baits, keep these big fish interested as long as we can because of the size of the lake what we're fishing, the shoal fish, so they will move, but what we're trying to do is hold them for as long as we can, keep them in our peg, that feed is going out lovely. We do like I said we've got a big hook we've got a tens hook so it's got a lot of points showing or what we want to have is a lot of points showing now your worm your worm's got where the worm sack is all I do is nip that off none of it goes to waste it goes in your feed but what you end up with is a worm open on one side the hook I then thread into the worm thread it up the shank now what that does it keeps it lively but what it does it stretches the worm out so it doesn't end up all over your up point what I then do just to make sure that you've always got a point showing you get a, a maggot any maggot don't really matter put that maggot on as well that keeps your hook point exposed and your worms calm down a bit and it should result in a fish every time right the other update what we've been using today is sweet corn um, like I said to you before, 
what you want to do, you want to try and pick, if you can pick, if you can get a good, good tin of sweet corn, um, just pick, I'm just trying to find one there to show you, just pick a hard grain of sweet corn, um, all we're doing, we're going in through the, the rounded end, not the open end, and normally what I do, I go from the, the side or the corner of it if I can, again we've got a big hook on, and all we do is thread it round the shank of the hook, leaving loads of up point exposed so them fish should shut should, should up themselves. Right, so we've just had that last skimmer. So we'll get back out. Same again, we won't change anything. Feeding casters and a few grains of corn. Like I said, big baits. Try to keep them nuisance fish out your peg or away from your peg. See what's waiting for us there. It's just at the bottom. We try and take the bow out of the line as fast as we can. Like I said, we're fishing braid. So it helps it. We're tightening up to the feeder. So we're tight on that now. What happens? Just tighten up a little bit to that. Just finish the middle last of that bow off. It is important that you get you get tight to your feeder as fast as you can really. Um, what that does if you do get fish what are following your feeder down, you'll see that bite and you'll see it quickly. If you're messing about and you you're not taking the bow out the line and getting tight on your feeder as fast as you can. Sometimes there's a chance you can miss them bites. Which in a match situation or even in a pleasure situation, it just means you can catch the most that you can out your peg. A bite there then. Look like a smaller fish. And you can tell and when you get used to looking for the indications and what indications are in your peg. You can sort of gauge what sort of fish you're getting the indications from. So where we had that bit of a rattle before, you would tell it it was a, a smaller fish. Normally a bigger fish, or a, a bream or a skimmer, give you a lot more positive bite. fish on that. What we might do this next choke, because we're feeding sweet corn, um, try a piece of corn on that top up just to see if we can get a response on it. There's the two fish that we have had have both been on that top up. So they are following that feeder down where that gets up. Like I said, pinch of casters, two or three grains of sweet corn. We're not changing anything yet because we've had the right response from feeding that bait. We'll get that out. Worth mentioning as well, when we're fishing big open reservoirs like this, your feeder choice and the size of the feeder what you're fishing can also get you a few more bites. So like I said, we're fishing a big, it's the XL um, Zippler cage what we're fishing now in a 40 gram, so it's getting us to the distance what we want. But if you imagine that's going in with a bit of noise, you're not you're not sneaking a feeder in, you're not making it go in quiet or just tighten back up to that feeder, you're not making it go in quiet. 
you want a bit of noise because like it's, it's, it's a great big place this it's a big wild reservoir them fish you're not used to seeing angles baits a lot that bit of noise that bit of commotion or bring fish in your peg if you do get a lot of fish in your peg you can change your feeder size then you can go to a smaller feeder or a, a bit lighter feeder and try and maximize what you have got in your peg but for now early on in the session it's about bringing fish in and it's about getting them competing for your food there's another fish on it's about getting them come in and compete for the food what you're feeding them so that that feeders ringing a dinner bell for them every time it goes in you'll soon get a good response and well, we hope we'll get a we, we hope we'll get a good response Roach again on corn on the top hook. Nice roach though. We'll try that again. The bait's not even come out of the feeder that time, that's how long that's been in. Get rid of it. Right. A few casters again. A couple of bits of corn. Send it back out into the abyss. Right, so that's just at the deck. Right, just tighten that ball out the line. Right, the venue that we're fishing today, um, it's a chain of chain of reservoirs, it's located in between Bolton and Chorley, uh, a place called Rivington, um, that's got to be a bream. Now this place, I'm lucky to be, to be able to fish this place, it's, it's local to myself um, and we've grown up fishing it, walking around it, it's a lovely place for to live. Beautiful. Um, it's controlled by Southport and District Angling Association. Uh, it is season tickets. You did used to be able to get day tickets one time, but you can't get day tickets anymore to come and fish this. Um, but it's really reasonably priced, um, and they've got some great waters. But Angles Lake like itself, um, it's. Um, it's a reservoir for drinking water, uh, or a chain of reservoirs, like I said. Um, I wouldn't like to hesitate uh, to, to guess on how many acres it is. Hundreds. Um, it's massive. But it's full of fish like this, what we're catching here now. You can have a really, really good day. They do have matches on it. See again, this is a bream. Um, and it's on the top up again on a piece of corn so like I said we have fed quite a bit of corn and look at stamp of them fish you don't need many of them in the match to um, knock a great weight up They weren't coming off. Just get that line off him. Look at the size of that one. Eat three pound. Maybe a touch more. 
Right, feeder choice for today's session. Like I said to you before, we've fished the ziplers. Um, these are honestly they're my favourite feeder for this sort of fishing. They're fishing big, wild, open water. The fish want loads of bait. This feeder can give it them. Um, the, the best feeder we've had today has been the XL, the XL um, zipler. But like I said, if your peg does change, there's different options what we've got in the feeder range. Well, we've got the XL, we've got the smaller one, in different weights as well, 40, 50, 60 gram. Um, if you want slightly less bait but you still need the cloud, that's your one. If it does go funny, and it has done a couple of times today where we've had to change feeders, the solid zippler where we can put the bait in, we can plug it, we can keep it really hard, make sure your bait gets down to the bottom where the fish are feeding, that's the one you need. That's, that's got us a few fish today when when no other feeders wouldn't have got us one. Um, and again, even the smaller one in the range, with the micro one, that, it'll still cast the distance, you can still put enough gear in it, it'll still get your fish. Alright, so while we're waiting for another one, just want to let you know, if you are thinking of having a go on this two-up method, uh, there's a couple of bits what would help you. Um, Line diameter and line choice. Um, try and err uh, on the side of thicker line. Um, today, like I said, we're not messing about. We're fishing five pound maxima, which is a thick line. What you're looking to get is a stiffer line. Um, because you're fishing two ups, like I said, you're trying to el eliminate tangles. So a thicker line will do that. Um, just missed, them. just missed the bite but I think a lamb will do that and also when you're um, looking at the hook arrangement try and keep your hooks away from your feeder otherwise again it just alleviates tangles so you top up if you're fishing a, a metre and a half up length, the top up needs to be at least 50 centimetres away from your feeder. And the bottom up, the same again, 50 centimetres away from that as a minimum. Um, what we do do, and what does help it, another little tip for you, is that when you putting bait on or when you're picking out your bait try and put the bigger bait on the furthest away hook and what that does in flight it gives you a bit of separation so then that will keep everything away from your feeder and you won't get tangled Try and catch you one more. Try and make it a bigger. Let's just hit the bottom. Tighten that bow up. And that is a bream. And another good fish. Right, so we've had a we've had a brilliant day's fishing. I've honestly lost count of how many bream I've caught. 
but we'll see when we take that net out. On simple tactics, big feeders, big hooks, thick line, and loads of bites. Catching bream with a twist. And I think this is going to be a good one to end up because my arms are tired. Another one in the net on simple bream tactics. Hope you've enjoyed it and we'll see you on the next one.